It's Wednesday, September 13th, 2023. Yeah, that's Hi. right. Yeah, it is. <laughs> you fact. are correct. <laughs> and you're on around 10. We that's got, right. we got a big show today. We do. We have Bill Cole here yeah. today. And I'm thinking, I think this is the first time he's been on here live. Certainly we with us. We had him yeah. in an oh, interview yeah, that's right. when he was... Uh, starting on the uh, coffee house That's before right. the as before it even opened. Yeah, they were just starting the renovations, and which is exciting. Open. And now it's open Super and exciting. things are happening. But he's here to talk about the the, the, gr- the grand the, theater. Yeah, big stuff happening at the grand coming up, and uh, lots of things always around town. We'll get you caught up on all the September events uh, at the library, and uh, yeah, all kinds of stuff. I know. Should I'm we get excited. going? We better. Let's yeah, do it. Let's do it. Round 10 is brought to you by Tim and Rebecca Hubbard with Exit Realty Crutcher. You need realtors who can help navigate the current fast-paced real estate market. So choose local realtors that treat you like family because real estate is what they do and families are why they do it. Welcome back to a Wednesday edition of Around 10. I'm Harvey Couch. That is Kathy Lindsay. Hi. And (laughs) we're ready to have a fun Wednesday morning with you guys. That's right. We're almost halfway through September, which means we're creeping towards October. The best month of the year. Which we have all agreed is the best month of the year for some reason. Because <laughs> everybody's, everybody good, good's birthday is in October. No, and it's there's Halloween, just good stuff going on. The weather's good. Good fall keyword. activities, good weather, yeah. football, right. just a change of pace. My birthday. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, so I can't believe it. We're almost there. We are. But... It's also hmm. a good time because it's fall break. It is. Yeah, fall break's coming. <laughs> fall break in October. <laughs> Weather changing. It That's was right. kind of cool this morning, foggy and cool this morning. When That's we right. Took the kids to school. Yeah. Um, but there was big news yesterday. Yeah. I didn't really pay any attention to it, but I'm sure you did. To the, Oh, to the Apple announcement. Yeah. Yeah, I always like to keep up with what, what's going on with those, those people. So tell me about it. What I missed? Uh, new phones, the mm-hmm. iPhone 15. Oh wow! Are we and there? We are at the 15, okay. and uh, and a new Apple Watch. Yep. Nothing like groundbreaking. I think just sort of it, you know iterations. Yeah. Is what they do, but uh, you know, new fancy camera, and uh, I guess the big announcement is that they're doing away with the old uh, plug. You know, the, oh, yeah, uh, the, yeah, yeah. they've been using. You've had the Lightning charger if you if you yeah. have iPhones uh, that that will not be on the new device. It'll be a USB C charger, right. which is which is like what you have in the laptop. Yeah, and, and the new iPads. Right, yeah. right, and lots of other devices yeah. are moving I, towards that. that. And and I'm a big fan of the USB C in that they they're reversible. Yeah. Because that was the thing that always used to drive me crazy with the little USBs or the big USBs. It would feel like I would turn it. It would be like four times before yeah. I would get back, forth, back, forth, <laughs> and then it goes. And, but these go back either way. So yeah. you can just plug it in and know that you're good. Works fine. So, uh, yeah. So time For to... some reason, I feel like they're faster. Mm. I don't know why. They might be. I think they might carry a little more power I don't than know. the Lightning. I'm not an electrician, so I don't know. You're but not? Uh, no. <laughs> But uh, but big news out of uh, out of Silicon Valley as they made those announcements and um, yeah I think yeah. they come out next week I think you can buy them at the store okay so um, what else is going on Kathy um, I don't know no <laughs> I made it out here without my phone so I don't know I'm not on Facebook okay. uh, <laughs> well why don't we talk about our question of the day okay because that was part of my morning this morning okay it was uh so we got uh you know you're getting up you get everybody ready you're doing your thing uh no milk in the house there's no milk in the house we never have milk in the house and uh well i use milk in my coffee yeah. and, and sometimes the, the kids like to have milk in the uh in, the, in their breakfast yeah and so i ran out to our, the little midway corner grocery which is right down the store yeah. down the street and i got myself a, a little you know half gallon of milk and I was like, you know what? I think I'm gonna get myself a little breakfast while I'm here because they have good, uh, okay. good breakfast sandwiches. Yeah. You know, you get biscuits, sausage and egg biscuits. They also have donuts there. Yeah. And so I literally, as I was walking in, I was like, I don't know what I'm in the mood for today. Is it? A, am I gonna get a breakfast sandwich yeah. or or donut? And uh, I went donut today. Got myself an apple fritter. It was very good. Are those made fresh there at the they, place? They, I don't know, not there, somewhere. But they bring though. them. Yeah, they in bring them every day. Somewhere there, yeah. in Midway. No, I don't know who does them. Maybe <laughs> in Versailles or Georgetown. I don't know. Yeah, but they're good. They're good okay. donuts. Uh, I mean, they're not as good as like the places here in Frankfurt. Yeah, but they're they're okay. 
for being a two minute drive away there, right. they, they work. Yeah. Um, so that I actually was, was presented with this question today and okay. didn't have an answer as I walked in. Mm. So the question of the day is, are you team sweet or team savory for breakfast? Ooh. So do you like to have a sweet treat in the morning to get you going? Or do you like, a you know, something a little more savory? It really depends. Does it depend I, on the day? Kind of like what your mood on the is? Day, but I usually go sweet. Yeah. I feel like I should go savory. Like that's probably yeah. better for you. Like, like you need protein. Protein gets yeah. you going. And then, but I'm always, I think I often just default to the sweetness of donuts or yeah. anything tasty. I mean, I, I, I usually go with a ginger scone. Yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> hard to argue, <laughs> but, but I'd be interested to hear if there are people who are like yeah. always one way or the other. Cause yeah. clearly I think we both go, go both ways yeah. depending on the, uh, on the if I'm on vacation, mm-hmm. we always, we do breakfast and we always hit a diner and it's on, mm. it's like all the stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's both. Right. <laughs> I do find sometimes that if you go like savory, that that can, it can kind of, load you down yeah a little bit. well you then you're I mean? just gonna go lay on the beach right well that's true <laughs> yeah, at the beach that's perfect yeah but if i'm like having to go to work and get things done i'm yeah. like i don't know if i need a big you know thing of eggs and sausage in my right. belly sure um all right well let us know hit us up on our facebook feed or you can always do it on the text machine my as well phone has appeared five oh wow look at that five oh two three five three zero two three three that's the number if you want to text us and answer to our question of the day um, you can do it now, or if you're watching us on replay, let us know, and uh, we'll we'll hit you know we'll, we'll share it tomorrow or Friday when we're back on. So that's our question of the day. Got that here too. You got the text machine. Yeah. Okay, man, you're in charge of all the tech Imagine. today. Look at you. Um, all right, well let's uh, let's open up our community calendar and bring our bring our guest on. Oh yeah, he's waited long enough. Yeah. All right, we've got Bill Cole. Hello. Hey, Bill. Hey, hi. Thank you all. Thanks for coming. Yeah, um, thank you. Is this your first time on the on the set here on Around 10 with us? With you all, yes. Okay, It great. is, yeah. Well, I've been, uh, no, not been paying proper attention. I should have already <laughs> asked you to be here, but anyway, thank you for letting yeah, me come. Absolutely. Um, we want to get into all the things that are happening at the Grand uh, in the, with fall as far as concerts and, and movies and events and stuff, but um, maybe let's, let's step back a little bit and, t- and talk maybe more about the history of, of the theater and what the last few years have been about. Um, why, don't, why don't you share a little bit, if, if people don't know, you know, what, yeah, what, what the history of the Grand is a little bit. Yeah. Well, of course, it goes back to 1911. It was the Vaudeville House. And that was a single uh, uh, building that uh, until 1940 did Vaudeville shows, it seated 150 people. Then in the kind of beginning of the heydays of movies during World War II, Checkers Theater bought uh, an adjacent uh, L to the built that went over to Main Street, tore it down, and created the theater that was a movie theater until the mid-60s when it closed. Like many, they built out in the shop, you know, both Brighton Park Mm -hmm. and Franklin Square, which Checkers also operated those. But Mm -hmm. so they closed down it and then ultimately the Capitol Theater shortly after. But... Anyway, we put together a deal, bought the building in, in 2005, and put together financing and opened. Uh, it'll be uh, 14 years this uh, on, November, on September 25th mm. that we will have been open. And with exception of the uh, COVID period, have done 13 seasons, I think is the correct number that mm. we're now in. But um, so... We've been there a while, and we've increased our numbers of people. We went down, obviously, during COVID, but we did over 15,000 in the theater, and the year ended May 31 of 23. We, uh, we operate on, a, mm. on that calendar mm. year, but we're back. So w- when you guys, Scott, took, you know, made the purchase in 2005, how- we have our coming attractions board for the okay. theater, but then we bought it from him mm-hmm. and then, then, then converted it back to what it was. You could you didn't even know it was a theater because it was a drop ceiling, mm. but it was still there. Wow. So yeah, so it's uh, it's it's uh, and of course the the balcony was where when it was open, uh, black people were forced to mm. to sit. They were they they could come to the theater, but they couldn't sit on the first floor with the uh, white audience. So now is there some kind of special program about the stories from the balcony? I've heard that. Yeah, we're doing we are we are doing a film. Uh, 
we did a number of interviews. Actually, uh, Joanna Hay, who lives here, did when she was on our board back in 2006, that period when we were trying to do the theater with, with people who, uh, mostly black people, who mm -hmm. had been up in the balcony. Mm -hmm. And we're now going forward to create the film that we would then uh, uh, both show in the theater and then do uh, more to tell people about that history of I think segregation. That's yeah. yeah, it is. And there are people, several that did interviews then that frankly are no longer with mm -hmm. us, but she's going to start interviewing tomorrow, uh, some who are. Oh, wow. Still. Yeah. And uh, uh, we hope in the next uh, three or four months to get those interviews done and then create a film that we'll show next spring in oh, the theater. We're great. really excited about that because it's really important to understand our, right. our past, you know, yeah. Yeah. what exactly it tells us. Yeah. Uh, you know, we sort of were less segregated, but we still were segregated, mm -hmm. you know. But, you know, society, uh, we did the, you know, Martin Luther King's March here was in 1964. And, and then, of course, the Civil Rights Act in Kentucky passed in 66. So, you know, it, it took time, mm -hmm. you know. When you were going through the facility, sort of, I don't know if it's the first time or what, do, do, are there any good stories of things you found or, you know, you well, tore down a wall and you're like, oh, my gosh, look at this. Well, we found, for one thing, that when you enter on the left was the uh, uh, very primitive type plas painted plaster from the vaudeville house. And, of course, oh, wow. That had been covered up in 1940, 41, when it opened. Very little of the theater until we, we had, there was a flat concrete floor, which the theater slope went down toward the stage. Mm -hmm. And we had to crack, and we had a guy, uh, Danny Fuqua, who, who lives here, who with a, a jackhammer, uh, 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 whatever the small the ball piece of equipment is that you can use like a, a, a bobcat, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He jackhammered and we took it out and we found like the original coming attractions. We found mm -hmm. stuff, but it was all cut. Then, you know, they just tore it up, yeah. put it in and poured concrete <laughs> over it. So we mm -hmm. found some stuff there, but it still wasn't, you know, you'd hope to find more. We did find, you know, plaster wall. We did find a stage, but we had to get rid of the stage because it's only five feet deep because mm -hmm. it was yeah. a movie theater. Yeah. And other than John Balpin telling us he saw uh, uh, Hopalong Casty's horse on the stage <laughs> once when, you know, because the Grand was kind of a grade B theater, mm -hmm. uh, cowboy shows yeah. and, and that kind of thing. Uh, it, you know, the Capitol was still operating, and that's where, if you went to see Casablanca in 1943, right, whatever, whatever right, it was, yeah. you went there mm -hmm. okay. to see it. But uh, Anyway, we wish there was more, yeah. but but uh, we cool. we do have we we do have the plaster walls outside of the of the theater, and mm -hmm. again, it was a very it, it was not a grand theater sure. other than in name. So so that sounds like a lot of work. So how does all that get paid for? Well, <laughs> it was a lot of things. We uh, we had some support initially from the city on some engineering work. We went to the legislature in. Uh, well, we had we had a loan from from then Farmers Bank to purchase the building from Jim Morris, and then we went to the legislature and were in uh, in, in 2006 were able to get a 480 thousand dollar appropriation. So then we were able to buy the Hendrick House, which is where our offices mm -hmm. are, which was another building but adjacent to the theater, and then the county uh, levied uh, a hotel room tax under the statute that w could be used for performing arts centers. Mm -hmm. okay. And that in 2006 happened in December, and the sum of all those things added up to what, along with people donating money in, the, in, right. in yeah. Frankfurt. But we would have never, uh, well, at least I can say, I don't believe we could have ever done it, but for those large pieces of support we got mm -hmm. from the city, state, yeah. and the county, mm -hmm. uh, we just, you know, we're not Louisville where you got Brown Foreman and you got mm -hmm. all these big companies right. and everything, or... Um, and, but we got it done. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Got it done, so, so, so let's talk about now that we're here, let's talk about the fall season. Okay. What, um, <laughs> what are you, what are you excited? What are the, what are the, yeah, know? we are. It's our back. We, we were back. As I mentioned, we went, we had to go down to where we had 3,500 people, then 9,000 9, and then 15, five, and we're back with 16 shows, which okay. we haven't had since before COVID. And, um, We've got, a, I think, a diverse season. We are trying to move toward m more young artists or younger mm -hmm. artists, I would say, though we've had great success with Rod the Birds, Roger McGuinn and Garrison Keeler and all that. But mm -hmm. we, uh, 
We have coming up next week a, a tribute show to uh, Olivia Newton-John that we're excited about. She died 13 months ago, I guess, mm -hmm. and I found out about this woman with developing a show about a year ago, and we're going to show that. We're going to have that. Uh, and then we've got this amazing show coming up called uh, Rising Appalachia, these two sisters. The show's almost sold out. We've got about 15 tickets left. Oh, wow. So it's, uh, it, it's very popular. Yeah, there's their picture, and uh, they, uh, they've got a huge fan base. Mm -hmm. I had a woman call over the weekend. We went, we're driving from Milwaukee, oh, wow. you know, and we didn't have any, frankly, of the better tickets left. But mm -hmm. I said, you better buy these, and maybe we can offer you something if somebody gives back their tickets. Mm -hmm. Um, Michael Cleveland's after that. If yeah. I keep going, is that okay? Yeah, yeah sure. Absolutely. You tell me now. No, no. We've got them all. Michael Cleveland is like the <laughs> number the one fiddle player, player in the world. Yeah. He's a blind guy that 12 times has been the top by whatever association mm -hmm. picks it. Bella Flex says he's the greatest in the world. Of course, Bella, we we revere because he's sure. come to the sh the theater three times oh, nice. and he's the best banjo player in the world yeah, i think is generally a player <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but but uh, we're excited and he's from he he was born in henryville which is metropolitan louisville you know just okay. north of the jefferson county area so you know and then we're ha we're really excited about we we're having the live a live performance by the Paramount Players in Ashland of Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yeah. Now Kathy is really excited. I'm very yeah. excited. Well, you about better this. get tickets too. Okay. It's selling okay. also. I know. You better get them. But I, but uh, well, we, I had we other really, plans, but I'm I'm trying to shift those plans in order to get we, tickets. I, th I think you should because you know uh, we've shown the movie. We showed it last year yeah. for Capital Pride, but yeah. but uh, this is a little different. And I have to say, we've never had something where. You know, people aren't fully dressed on the stage, right. you know, much, but but uh, much of the time, and where we don't have a transvestite from outer space, and <laughs> and where we, we we're hoping we we are rated it, rating it R, mm -hmm. uh, but we're hoping that we don't have any of the culture wars uh, mm -hmm. in Frankfurt come our way across the river. We don't think we will. So right. far, nobody's been anything but excited about it. But I think it's going to be great. Yeah, I, yeah, I think so too, and uh, we are we are really happy to be doing that and. And then I guess after you want me to keep going, yeah, right? Yes. Okay. Let's go. it's a well, great well, one thing we do have we're showing Rain Man the movie next week. I didn't mention that, right. and then Scarface next month. That yeah. of course both have big followings. I remember how good Dustin Hoffman oh, and man. Tom Cruise were together in Rain Man. And then obviously mm -hmm. Al Pacino right. blew the place off, and uh, as well as everybody, <laughs> right. everybody was everybody around anyway. Screen. But but uh, <laughs> with that pound pile of cocaine in his in his uh, bedroom. But yeah. but anyway, uh, we've got those. But then. We're going to have this amazing uh, uh, collage dance. These two black dancers from New York went to Memphis to create a dance company mm. for black people mm. and have done that. And it's uh, I saw them. They, they do this show called Rise where they dance. And they're all people of color. Uh, now, there are a bunch of them that are from Brazil and places. Mm. They're not. Uh, uh, but... but uh, they do, they do it to Martin Luther King's speech uh, mm -hmm. the day he was murdered. And, of course, they're Memphis and they're mm -hmm. coming here, and that's exciting. And then we got Tab Benoit, our other biggest-selling show. Well, I yeah. forgot that Ace Frehley, we're having the co-founder yeah. of KISS. We're I having him. Say. He's not in our season, but <laughs> we still have good tickets for that. But I uh, was wondering. When I saw it, when those tickets first came out, I was like, oh, my husband would love that. But that's my birthday, and I don't know. Oh, yeah. You don't want to go see my birthday. birthday. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, I can't speak to that other than – other than uh, um, <laughs> Other than he is an icon, and, I know and we're, we're I've had people ask me about that show, but but uh, yeah, I, um, and and then I already mentioned Tab Benoit is our second oh, best selling yeah. show. Yeah. Well, and as a, I, I mean, I'm from New Orleans. I yeah. know, I mean, uh, Steve's a big guitar guy. I mean, yeah. Tab Benoit guitar is is unbelievable. So that'll be a great Which show. Which one would you choose? Uh, me personally, I would go see T Tab Benoit okay. over Ace Freely, but I'm more of that kind of style than okay. Kiss. And we've had great luck with, with uh, and I, th I think, uh, as I said, his show, I think we got 30 tickets left. So, you know, yeah. it's it's 90-something percent sold right, right mm -hmm. now. Right. So it's it's uh, doing really well. And, of course, then we uh, uh, we have Joan Osborne, mm -hmm. who's from Louisville originally. Nice. Yeah. has been in New York for many years that we had her once before. And we've got we still have good tickets to her show, but I expect it to be a sellout right. for sure as we get closer. Yeah. And then Bluegrass Theater Guild, they're going to do Elf. We we love yeah. partnering with them as we do the Nutcracker and the yeah. shows that you know are community shows. The Christmas and stuff, um, for sure. I think that one will be a really neat to have them do that. So yeah. that's our fall, uh, and 
I mean, we have other stuff we're doing, but uh, that, you know, whether it's the Nutcracker in December, this our, actually it's our largest event in terms of number of people. We have, I think, 1,500 come to see it, you know, when Kentucky Dance Academy puts it on. But, uh, we, you know, we've yeah. got all that coming up. And you, do you guys do are season tickets still an option for folks? Or are they sold out? or is that Well, we still have – we have had one show, but we okay. still have a, uh, maybe four that could be purchased for the balance of the season. Okay. Now, pretty by the end of next week, that won't be doable because we only have two of the 16 shows will okay. be gone. Sure. But we would try to wear – anyone that wants a bulk – you know, number of shows, we mm -hmm. want to try to make it work. Yeah. And we would provide some sort of discount. Okay. Sheila White in our ticket office is great at doing that, and uh, uh, we, we would we would want people to consider I see something in here. What What is this, the Met Opera, Dead Man Walking? Okay, the Met, we, we, we live stream from the, Met, from the Metropolitan Opera House in New uh, York, okay. Okay. Uh, the opera. Uh, the opera started a couple years ago uh, trying to move into more contemporary, mm. uh, had to do with, frankly, audience. And to say that sometimes our shows have old people like me, the <laughs> Met Opera is older than, than <laughs> that older audience than that. Sure. But uh, yeah, it's the Susan Sarandon, uh, uh, I mean, it's not, she's not in it, mm. but yeah. it's the show of yeah. whatever the name of she was, the uh, sister or whatever, right. and right. of Sean Penn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it, uh, an incredible singer named Joyce DiDonato sings uh, the Susan Sarandon role. Oh, uh, okay. And then I, I can't remember the guy's name who right. sang Sean Penn. Yeah. But it, it is an opera that, it, because it's in English, frankly, it doesn't scare people. Mm. And it is a movie that was revered. You okay. know, I can't remember if anybody won the Academy Award for it, but it was a, mm -hmm. right. an oh, amazing yeah. film sure. that to, to see as it progressed. But... Yeah, they, they, they do that some, and then we'll have, you know, traditional opera that, you know, people know, I, I, right now, can't tell, uh, Nabucco, the others, I can't tell you what all of them are, but right. but we do that. See, one of the things to provide to all kind of audiences is what we want to do at the Grand. Right. And, you know, you can go to the movie theater in Lexington or Louisville and see that opera, mm -hmm. but here we're doing it, uh, and, you know, where it really doesn't make sense unless you've got people like me and... Uh, Sheila and Jeremy, who are willing to work the show and not be paid mm -hmm. yeah. to do it, you know, or not be paid anything extra. Mm -hmm. So we do it. We love to do it. And yeah. yes, we have a small audience, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, it's something that it's a really nice thing, frankly, also to put on our grant applications. I think that that's what they literally call a labor of love. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> it, it has been for a lot of people. Again, yeah. we're, we're almost, with the exception of a small a couple people, yeah. everybody's a volunteer who right. works at the grant, and they do it because they love the community. Yeah. They want us to bring people from out of town. I think we already had eight states that have, they're coming to rising Appalachia. Just real quick, a mm. show we had last guy named Pokey Lafarge. I never heard of Pokey Lafarge. Mm. We had him back in, in May. We had people from 13 states come mm. to Frankfurt to yeah. see that. One of our primary purposes is tourism, and and uh, to be able to do that because these people, like these people from uh, Milwaukee, that are coming to Rising Up, said, "Well, we're tell us a neat place to stay." Right. And and then I said, "Well, the next day is Keeneland, and the next day is Bourbon on the Bank, so right. you ought to come down yeah. and stay here, right. and then and then go and go to Josephine Sculpture Park, right. mm -hmm. you know, because they're arts people, obviously. Mm -hmm. Well, not obviously, but they are arts right. people. But anyway, it's a a part of our mission is all that, and I'm. That's I great. hope I'm not rambling no, too much. No, on this, uh, <laughs> that's what we like to do. I can, I can, I can spend a lot of time, and I try. But hopefully, you all let me come back and talk about the spring season. Oh yeah, absolutely. winter, spring, because we've got a lot of shows then that that would take us beyond where maybe we want to be right now. No, but. absolutely. So we do want you to come back. Okay. And we want to talk about, because uh, you've taken us through Christmas. <laughs> and yeah. so we want you to come back after that, talk about things coming up uh, in okay. uh, 2024. Yeah. Uh, because I, I'm based on what we've seen for the end of this year, I'm sure there'll be a lot more exciting things. Oh, yeah. There okay. are. Thank you all so sure. much. Though. Absolutely. Yeah. And so if people want to get tickets or any of the events. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, info at the grand ky.com you can buy okay. tickets to um, most all our shows or a few things maybe you can't and then the other is to call 352-7469 okay. our uh, number and as I said Sheila White's our ticket office manager and either Sheila or Jeremy will answer the phone there and can sell you tickets to anything we've got okay. the movies and everything you know nice. And if you want to help, uh, oh, you'd yeah. you be happy to take uh, volunteers. Thank you for bringing right? that. Yeah. We, are, we <laughs> need more volunteers. We have the, the, the original group, a number of them, uh, 
uh, are a little farther along than sure. me, and they're not volunteers anymore. Yeah. Uh, and we've even lost a few of those. But yes, we we need and Sheila. That's the same way. Mm-hmm. The website or calling the ticket office and talking to Sheila or Jeremy. I mean, somebody can ask me too, but it's better sure. to do that. Yeah. They're more organized. So, are, are there any perks me. of being a volunteer? Well, we give you uh, not a well. Mostly, it's a love of labor too, but, okay. but uh, a labor of love. I got that transposed, yeah. but but. Uh, we give you a ticket to a future uh, uh, movie or other event, not okay. a, one of the big live shows. Right, no, right, right. You have okay. to have more than one for that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, and then popcorn and a soft drink. There you go. So Sounds at the good. event, so you do have the ability. And there are people that do it, and they give the ticket to their spouse or partner to yeah. come to the movie because you can also watch it, of sure, course, yeah. or, or watch yeah. the live show. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. On it. Right. Yep. See that works. Well, thanks, Bill, for coming to visit, and and we hope to see you again in a couple months. We'll talk about what's going on. You will if you let me. Absolutely. Okay. (laughs) Uh, All right. Well, Bill Call from the uh, Grand Theater. We've got uh, lots more to cover what's happening around town, and and we'll get to our question of the day, too. Uh, We'll be back right after this. In today's fast-paced housing market, you need realtors with experience who understand that timing is essential when finding the perfect home for the right price. Tim and Rebecca Hubbard with Exit Realty Crutcher are here to ensure that you and your family have a positive experience from start to finish. Real estate is what we do. And families are why we do it. Meet Jeff and Abby, your compass in the new age of advertising. Your guide on the trail to new business. Because these days, you need a guide. Your customers are spread out everywhere and you need to be able to reach them anywhere. On the internet, on cable, on streaming services. Wherever they are, we are. Let Jeff and Abby make the perfect custom plan for your business and your budget. FPB Advertising, we're everywhere. Contact us and talk to Jeff or Abby today. All right, we're back on a Wednesday edition of Around 10. Here we are. Um, Such a, just a jewel the grand theater you it know is. what i mean it totally and right is. and it's right there in the middle of downtown and yeah. just sort of a you know the center of the arts and and, and i have seen some Frank. great stuff yeah. at the grand theater i remember we did uh we filmed the rebirth brass band there several oh, years ago yeah I don't know if we need to pull that out sometime and show yeah. it on cable 10 but um yeah yeah just a great great venue and glad to see that they keep keep the hits coming yeah i mean the lineup is great and I diverse it. I'd like it. And he, he didn't mention uh, the birds will be playing in there. The oh, movie. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was like, not the band. Didn't Roger, Roger McGuinn <laughs> was here last year? Is they coming back? No, the film. Yes. The, film. the Alfred Hitchcock film. And Malcolm X. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Always great lineup. Uh, the, that Turner Classic Movies, movies. Uh, lineup. They have yeah. a good film every month. Um, um, I put the uh, the text machine over here because okay. I don't know the password. Okay. <laughs> Well, it's a good thing I do. Yeah, I know. All right. They don't uh, share things with me. <laughs> well, that's probably for the best. Let's uh, get into our question of the day, Kathy. Okay. We're, we're, we're talking, are you team sweet or savory for breakfast? Stephanie says, team coffee. <laughs> well, some days that's a good that's a good team to be on. Same. And they kind of, uh, you call that, well, you know, I always wondered why, uh, why it was called breakfast. Yeah. You know, because it's like you're supposed to eat it fast. You're breaking your fast from the night. That's exactly what I was going to say, Kathy. Yes. But thanks for taking taking the mantle there. <laughs> but yeah, so some people like to extend their fast further into the day, yes. and so maybe they don't break it in the morning; they break it yeah. at lunch. Yes. Um, so your yeah, so your lunch is your breakfast. Right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, Stephanie does say she prefers savory and salty okay. when, when she does eat okay. the food. Leslie Smith says savory, but she doesn't like breakfast food. Okay. Leslie. So there's Don't another us. team. <laughs> well, but like she doesn't like breakfast food at all. Like doesn't like like a biscuit and gravy. I don't know. Just some conversations. Mickey uh, Mouse shaped pancakes. Oh, I bet she likes those. <laughs> I bet she does. Leslie McShane says she likes savory fried eggs with spinach and cheese. Yeah, that's about up her alley. Do you, does she go over easy, over or just sunny side up? I don't know. I fried eggs. Oh, yeah. Um, I uh, cook. I cook a fried egg for the little one 
just about every morning. Really? That's what he has for breakfast. Really? On Friday. And, and he, he eats that? Yeah, he eats it up. Mine likes had, scrambled. Um, the other one, the older one likes scrambled, but the younger one likes the fried. Yeah. And uh, he does, we do it over hard. I mean, it's yeah. pretty solid, the, the yolk. Oh, okay. But he likes the whites and he eats it up. He also likes um, pickled eggs, hard boiled eggs that are in pickled, like pickled oh. brine, Ooh. which is, yeah. Okay. No. He just throws them in like he's like Grogu. On, you know, <laughs> just, um, uh, uh, Zach Hubbard says, I'd say savory for sure, but I don't say no to a little donut treat. Yeah. And uh, I'd have a hard time being friends with anybody who doesn't like donuts. I feel like there's something wrong with yeah. you at that point. Agreed. Uh, Lorraine says, bring me the sweets. Yep. So another team sweet there. Dave of Columbia, both. Breakfast burrito with chocolate shake. <laughs> I like that. It's hard to beat a good breakfast burrito. True. Why do we always devolve into food talk on the Wednesday show? I don't know. It just seems to happen. You picked this. I did. That's what happens. Uh, Crystal Cox says team yes for breakfast. <laughs> and I think I'm on team yes too. I am not yeah. super picky. Because I get into those, uh, if we go to like, you know, do a restaurant for breakfast. Do you ever yeah. do that? Like a, like a sit down? Yeah like wild eggs or something if you've yeah. been there and you get the menu and you're like i just don't know just, do i want pancakes do i yeah. want you know biscuits and gravy do i want yeah. a you know an egg scramble or do, do I, I want, want this omelet yeah. with bacon and biscuits and gravy right or and pancakes on the side cinnamon roll and yeah. the french toast with the whipped cream on top you could do that yes <laughs> <laughs> you hand it back and say this looks good <laughs> Well, see, that's that's where the kids come in handy. Right, and because they, they don't eat all of it. They don't eat it all, and then you can go, and then, here, I'll take some of that, and, yep. and then you kind that's of good, split it up. That's good thinking. I haven't done that in a while. <laughs> uh, let's see. See, Vess says grapefruit and toast. He sounds healthy. I, I can't do a grapefruit. And do the, is grapefruit still around? That seems like an <laughs> 80s thing, Steve. <laughs> It's a fruit. It still exists. Um, but no, yeah, I don't. My mom will, will slice a great grapefruit in half and just eat it with a spoon. Yeah, that's, yeah. And I can't. Maybe, no. you know, I should try one because, you know, your tastes change. And maybe yeah. I'm into that kind of bitter stuff now. Yeah. But man, yeah. as a kid, I was like, grapefruits. <laughs> um, but he also says pancakes, pancakes. Okay. So. Oh, okay. Good. Um, <laughs> You're redeemed. Scott says both. He can't choose a side. Some mornings he's going to want cinnamon rolls. Some mornings he's going to want gravy and biscuits. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you on that. It's hard. It's hard to make a call. That's why both are valuable. Yeah. You know what I mean? I I wouldn't want to shun one side or the other. Same. Um, Picking a favorite kid. (laughs) That's why you only had one. I just had one. (laughs) Um, But I'm with... uh, I'm with... uh, Biscuits and gravy are another thing that, that was a later development in my life like i didn't really like biscuits and gravy when i was the first of all i don't think i don't remember being exposed to it in louisiana it was not a thing i was raised on it and so then when i came to kentucky i was like this is weird what are you guys doing you know what i mean like i I like a biscuit but why are you putting all this white gravy on it (laughs) and then i was then i was shown the light and now i know okay why but anyway good question good answers hit us up if you if you have a take team sweet team savory on breakfast you can do it on Facebook or you can do it on the text machine at 502-353-0233. You hear my computer? Is that, I was like, what is, <laughs> is there a plane taking off? What is going on? I don't know. That's what you have for 7,000 tabs open. Your computer's like, it's so hard to do this. I've got to, I'm getting so hot. I'm rebooting. No, yeah, it's Sorry. just cooling off all the stuff. It's is working that what, hard. Do you think so? Yeah, it's a fan that's cooling <laughs> off your your. Computer is overheating. I'm very busy. All right. Well, we're still in our community calendar, Kathy. Mm-hmm. It's uh, tomorrow is the the arty hour at the grand uh, at the grand theater. Oh, we could have talked about. We this. should have. Why didn't we? Bill. <laughs> um, tomorrow from five to seven, join the grand theater as they welcome Georgetown College art professor Daryl Kinser to the gallery for his ex- exhibition, Fixing the Wind. It's, an ex, uh, it's part of the Louisville Photo Biennial, a regional celebration of fine art photography, including over 50 venues in Metro Louisville, Southern Indiana, and Central Kentucky. So it's cool that they're doing it here in Frankfurt. Nice. So check that out tomorrow between 5 and 7 at the Grand. That is a cool gallery upstairs at yeah. the Grand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Plus, it's just it's like a little extra when you go to a show. Right. You just get out there and check it out. Yeah. 
All right, reading nature signs. Okay. Vaughn Branch Nature Preserve. And that's right out there by our I know. We still I have, don't even know anything about it. I haven't it. been there either, but we need to go it's do that It's at someday. 160 Flynn Avenue in Frankfurt. Uh, this is happening uh, tomorrow at 5 o'clock. Uh, learn to read nature signs on this hour-long hike to understand things like which animals are in the area, mm. how old the forest is, okay. or how high the stream floods. Okay. All good things to uh, know. Sturdy shoes are recommended. And it's free. So is that down towards the Humane Society? I'm guessing. On Flynn Avenue? I mean, if we're, we're 151. We're 151 Flynn Avenue. So 160 would be the other side of the street. Opposite side of the street, down, down past Birch Dental. And, I'm the, and probably past the, the Social probably Security past Office. the Social and, Security Office. Yeah. We should probably find that out. Maybe we should take some time, Kathy, like a, like a break at work. I don't okay. know if we do those ever. And, and we could go walk down there and find the entrance to the Vaughn Branch Nature Preserve. Okay. Sound like a plan? Sure. Okay. Um, next up, we got stuff going on at the library, as always. In the youth program room tomorrow at 6.30. Uh, it's Silent Library. The name of the game is Silent Library. In order to win, you must endure hilarious challenges without making a sound. Program is for teens in grades 6 through 12. Registration is not required. Yeah. Um, have you ever seen the, uh, the like... I don't know what they're called, but like they have the, there's one with like Will Ferrell and Mark Wahlberg, and they try to they tell each other dad jokes, and they try not to laugh. No, it's one of those things you got to just stay. But then you know the other person is telling you a funny joke. <laughs> I, I like that. It's a cool concept. Okay. Because it's this Very whole thing about you're trying to you know you're trying to not make noise, but oh, it's okay. like it's so funny. Yeah. You just want to laugh. Well, they have those try not to laugh videos. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. Same Steve thing. and Ella love those. Yeah. But they always just laugh. Right. <laughs> Maybe they should try tomorrow at the because uh, mm-hmm. okay. she's in she's in sixth grade, right? Yeah. So you could do that. Okay. Um, Found objects, sketch and stroll. Uh, this is at Riverview Park on Friday at four thirty. Uh, Woods and Waters Land Trust is doing this. Uh, it's Clean Up the World Weekend. Uh, join Woods and Waters Office Administrator Risa Yost for found object sketch and stroll as we walk through Riverview Park. You'll collect found objects to use for a creative piece along the way. So it's ooh, artsy. Uh, materials are provided for this free event where you have the opportunity to exercise your legs and your creativity. Registration is required, but it is a free event. Okay. I wonder um, how you register. Okay, I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> Check out, I'm sure the Woods and Waters, Woods um, and Waters Land, Land Trust. Trust. Check, Check out their out. Facebook page or their website. Okay. Find out more. Uh, on s- Friday, Taste of the Trace, Kathy, at yeah. Buffalo Trace. We talked about this last week a little bit. At 5.30 on Friday, Casa of the Bluegrass's annual fundraiser yep. will be a night to remember. we got barbecue, bourbon tours, great music, plus Hoggy's ice cream, Bearded Brothers photo booth, a silent auction, and much more, all in support of advocating for Kentucky's kids. So okay. that sounds like a great night on Friday at the at it does Buffalo sound Trace. Good. You got ice cream. Barbecue, you bourbon tours, washing. music. Sounds like fun. Supporting the kids. Yep. <laughs> uh, All right. So we're celebrating KSU Day again at the Farmer's Market. This is happening um, Saturday at 830. Yeah. Get up there. You got to get up early to do that's the Farmer's early Market, on Saturday. Kathy. You don't go every Saturday? Uh, again, that's early. Okay. It looks like they're going to have free samples of pawpaws. Pop, uh, yeah, well, they do. Uh, can you put the graphic back up? Is it Papa Ice Cream? Did I see that? Yeah, Papa, Papa Ice Cream, ice cream and, and Papa Jam. jam. Uh, they do that over at the uh, at the um, the farm. Yep. They okay. grow that stuff yep. and uh, and the aquaponics uh, department. Okay, that reminds me. I've got I've got an aside here later. Okay. Okay. Uh, so anyway, KSU uh, faculty, staff, and students will have the chance to stock up on lots of apples. Mm. and other culinary delights as Celebrate KSU Day returns to the Franklin County Farmer's Market this Saturday, starting at 8.30. Uh, The first 50 KSU staff, faculty, or students with their official school IDs will receive a $25 Shop Local gift card. Uh, This is courtesy of the City of Frankfurt. 
A student hike to the Farmer's Market Pavilion via the Thoroughbred Trail Ooh. will be hosted by Walk Bike Frankfurt at 10 a.m. Cool. Uh, the, uh, this year's event, uh, the second of its kind, uh, will feature free samples of the university's own right. pawpaw ice cream yeah. and jam, uh, an aquaponics informational booth, the return of the school's drone demonstrations, mm. a herd of goats, educational resources, and more. Wow. Uh, the event runs until noon at the Farmer's Market Pavilion, 404 Wilkinson Boulevard. For more information, visit the market's website, and that's at franklincountyfarmersmarket.org. Yeah. 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 I saw on Facebook, and I meant to save the graphic to talk about today, but at the Capital City Museum, mm -hmm. our friend, uh, Dr. Ellie, yeah. has a pawpaw tree. Oh. It's dropping fruit. Oh. And she's giving them away for free. Ooh. At the Capital City Museum. Okay. So if you want some pawpaws, yeah, just go to the front desk at the Capital City Museum. Okay. Tell her you want one. I heard the door shut. I think pawpaw <laughs> ran out the door to get himself some pawpaws. So uh, she might not know that I'm advertising well, this, but she put it ready. on Facebook. Yeah. So I just wanted to share that That's because awesome. she said it's uh, high producing, and uh, she said the fruit is dropping, and she's bringing it in by the buckets. Okay. So, there you go. Um, on Saturday, from 1 to 2 at the Kentucky Historical Society, uh, it's the Women at War uh, exhibit. You can learn about the role of women in Kentucky's military history from the Siege of Bryan Station through modern times while viewing artifacts from Kentucky's military history. Uh, the tour will begin in the Kentucky Military History Museum and conclude with the highlight tour of the special exhibit, Our Stories, Our Service, Kentucky's Women's Veterans. So that's Saturday from 1 to 2 yep. at the Historical Society. Love that. Also on Saturday, Kathy, at 7.45. Wow. Uh, the POW MIA Recognition Day. Um, this is at the K Kentucky Vietnam Memorial. Rolling Thunder Chapter 5 will honor 14 Kentucky military members who are missing in action. MIA from the Vietnam War and all prisoners of war uh, during a candlelight vigil on Friday. Okay. That is uh, two days from now. National POW MIA Recognition Day is planned for, like you said, 745 at uh, the Kentucky Vietnam War Memorial, and that's on Coffee Tree Road. Uh, the public is invited to attend. So I see here it says September 16th, but also says Friday, So, but no, the screen says Saturday. So I think the script is a typo. I think it is Saturday at 745. Okay. You said Friday. I just want to make sure nobody goes out there on Friday night and gets, you know, it's like, what's going on? I was just reading. That's, you know, you're like, uh, what's it, Ron, uh, Ron Burgundy? Yeah, I won't you put whatever go you that want, far. Put whatever you want in the script and it's going to come out of her mouth. Um, Girl Scout workshop on Sunday from 2 to 4 at Broadway Clay. Do you need to earn your pottery badge? What better place than at a pottery studio? Meet an artist and view the work in our gallery work on a potter's wheel to throw your own pot last you'll design a clay tile and paint it with glaze uh, they do not provide the badge but will fire two finished pieces for you and they'll be ready for pickup three weeks after the workshop so i like good that. opportunity I there think that's cool yeah um we got uh we got a, a video we're going to play but i want to just check in Real quick with our question of the day, because I see Andy talking, and I want to make okay. sure we get the chance to say hey to him before he goes. But first, Crystal says she makes crystals uh, crystals and gravy. She makes biscuits and gravy uh, <laughs> a few times a month, and I now expect that I get to try some of those. Crystal, if you're making those a few times a month, how about yeah. a little extra, and Hello. you bring them in to the office. That's right. Um, and good morning, Andy. And Hi, he says Andy. he loves a good chocolate Long John donut. Mm, yeah. That wonder. So I'm not into the Long Johns as much. My my wife and kids love them. Do you go cream or custard on your Long John? Uh, depends on where I get it. Okay. I like the cream Long Johns from Bees. Okay. I like the custard Long Johns from Poppies. Okay. All right. I'm team custard, but they're team cream. So, yeah, it's whatever you're into. Yeah. I wonder what Andy's into. Um, all right, let's let's uh, let's check in with with this video. I like the regular donuts from OMG. I oh, haven't <laughs> had those in a while. Um, Do not discriminate. <laughs> there's only one place in town that's hosting United States Poet Laureate and a play from the Bluegrass Theater Guild, offering discounts at select restaurants and businesses throughout the county 
and delivering books and movies for free to people with living with disabilities. And that's, of course, the Paul Sawyer Public Library. We checked in with some of the staff to get details on all that's happening in September in this month's Beyond the Bookcase. Hi, my name is Diane Dahoney, and I'm the Community Service Librarian at the Paul Sawyer Public Library. I want to talk to you about an event that we have coming up on September 18th, Monday, September 18th at 6 p.m. in the library's River Room. We are proud to be hosting an evening with United States Poet Laureate Ada Limon. Uh, Ada Limon is the author of six books of poetry, including The Carrying, which won the Nat National Book Critics Circle Award for Poetry. Her book, Bright Dead Things, was nominated for the National Book Award. Her newest book of poetry, The Hurting Kind, um, is available out now from Milkweed Editions. And she's actually the 24th Poet Laureate of the United States. Uh, when we host her at Paul Sawyer on September 18th, uh, following her reading, Poor Richard's books will be on hand for a book signing, so you'll be able to pick up uh, copies of uh, Ada Limon's books to have signed that evening. Um, a very special opportunity. We're proud to be hosting uh, her as the U.S. Poet Laureate here in the capital city. Um, space is limited, so we do ask that you sign up in advance. Uh, you can do that by going on our website or by calling the library and we'd be happy to register you. Hello, I'm Margie Moore and I'm the Youth Services Manager and I would like to share with you about a wonderful opportunity we're having here at the library. We are partnering with the Bluegrass Theater Guild to present the Enchanted Bookshop. Step inside a bookshop where characters come to life. We will have the live production on Friday, September 15th Saturday, September 16th, and Sunday, September 17th. We will have performances in the evening and a matinee show. So we look forward to seeing you at the Enchanted Bookshop. Hi, my name is Stacy Stamper, and I'm the Media Design Specialist here at the Paul Sawyer Public Library. And I would like to talk to you about a library card promotion that we have going on in September. September is library card sign up month and we are celebrating all of the free and exciting resources that, and collections that you can get with your library card. But then we are also adding a special value, a little bit extra value to your library card just in the month of September. We are partnering with local businesses so that when you show your library card, uh, at the time of purchase, you can get a little extra special discount. We have got partnerships with businesses throughout the whole county and uh, re restaurants, retail establishments, different services, and you can find a list of all of those um, establishments on our website and on our Facebook page. And then we also have these brochures around town and in the library, and um, this has all the details in it as well. All you need to take advantage of this promotion is your library card. So if you don't have a library card, come on down to the library, we'll get you set up. And if you've lost your card, we'll get you a replacement card. One service that the Paul Sawyer Public Library offers that maybe you might not know about is our adult outreach services, uh, which assists homebound adults as well as elderly patrons uh, in our community who are in assisted living facilities, nursing homes, and retirement communities. Uh, this service also serves patrons who have a temporary mobility concern, such as a broken leg or even mothers with new infants. Library staff will gather materials for you, set a date for delivery, and bring those items right to your door. If you're interested in our outreach services, you would want to contact our outreach specialist, Paula Fott, uh, here at the library. You can reach her at 502-352-2665, extension 111, or by email at paula.fott at pspl.org. There's always something going on at the library, so check out PSPL.org or just watch every single episode of our show to stay up to date. <laughs> and uh, we're super excited about Humpty yep. sticking around. Hey. His permanent home here in Frankfurt. Everybody chipped in for that. Yep. Good work, everybody. Um, Kathy, let's talk about our solar garden. Yeah. In case you don't know, hey, we're going solar. <laughs> Uh, there are customers, electric customers with FPB, who have the opportunity to enjoy our voluntary uh, solar subscription program. If you are interested in renewable resources, you have the opportunity to participate in our community solar garden. Uh, all you have to do is go to frankfurtcommunitysolar.com, 
and uh, you can sign up for uh, whatever number of solar units that you're interested in. I think there is a limited number, but it's uh, $3.96 per unit per month, and uh, you'll see it on your bill every month. You'll, you'll get uh, charged for your usage, and then charge for uh, your units, and then you'll get credited for the amount of uh, energy for that your units produce every month mm -hmm. on the solar grid. So it's a good way to uh, just kind of dabble in what uh, solar energy produces so that you can see uh, what- you don't, you don't have to do a big installation. We don't. We've done uh, all that work. And, we have uh, done the work for you. You don't have to put anything on your roof. You might live in a, in a place where solar uh, panels won't work for you. Mm -hmm. uh, you might rent and uh, your, um, your landlord might not want you to put solar panels on Maybe you have roof. Christmas trees blocking all the, you know, Maybe. property. So uh, this is a good opportunity for you to just uh, uh, kind of, you know, take part in renewable energy without a big investment or uh, like long-term maintenance costs or anything like that. Yep. So uh, we're giving you the opportunity to do that through our uh, community solar program. Again, if you're interested, you can go to frankfurtcommunitysolar.com. All right. Uh, let's check out what's coming up on Cable 10. Um, tonight, we've got at 5, uh, Global Connections, 5 and 5.30. And then at 6, the Optimist Club. And at 7, the Frankfurt uh, City Commission work session from Monday. Uh, on Thursday, it's Historic Frankfurt Programs Night. Kathy, tell us about what's going on. Oh, there. okay. Uh, well, at 5 p.m., there's going to be a driving tour with uh, Richard Taylor, and that's from 1996. At 6.30, there's a portrait of early families from uh, 2010. At 7.30, uh, Yesterday and Today with Russ Hatter, and that's from 2009. At 8.30, Frankfurt Cemetery, Westminster Abbey of Kentucky, mm -hmm. 2007. And at 9.30 p.m., there's a photo collection, Part 2, from 2003. Okay. Cool. Yeah. And then on Friday at 10 a.m., we'll be back here around tinning. It'll be you and I think I just created a new verb, Kathy. It's around tinning. Around tinning. We're going to be around tinning on um, Friday. This is you and Scott, I think. Awesome. Are you guys going to be around tinning? And then at uh, 7.30, we'll have live Game of the Week football. Our first visit to Franklin County High School this okay. week, this year. Uh, they'll be hosting Spencer County, and Ooh. that'll also be streaming on the Cable 10 YouTube channel. Okay. Um, great stuff, as always. You know, I saw that, uh, I'm just a sidebar here for a second. Mm -hmm. I always think about in that bumper where it shows the old TV. Yep. It's just like memories of the past. Do you remember, because you, you're, you know, you're as old as I am, if not a little bit older. Um, the head on those old TVs, did you ever have one with a remote that like had like big buttons yeah, that you yeah. would press? Yeah. Do you know how that worked? It wasn't radio frequency or infrared like today's remotes yeah. are. Do you know how it worked? No. There was inside the thing, it was pretty big. Yeah, yeah. There were little, there were bars, metal bars. Okay. And each time the button pushed, it would like make a uh, an, an inaudible sound. It would go ding. Okay. It would like ring the bell. Okay. And then the TV had a thing that could hear it, and it would change the channel, change the channel, or turn up the volume, or whatever. I didn't know and that's that. That's how it worked. And apparently, oh. it like used to drive dogs crazy because it was like oh. the dogs could hear no, it. I didn't but, know that. Yeah. Oh. The more you know. <laughs> That's how the old TV remotes worked. <laughs> I thought the old TV remotes were my dad saying, change the channel. Well, that's how it worked <laughs> in my house because you'd be sitting up by the TVs. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, I think we've got time for a hot topic or two. Okay. Let's heat it up. Uh, all right. DraftKings. Man, have you seen a lot of commercials for DraftKings recently? Oh, my gosh. As, hey, Kentucky sports fans. As the uh, <laughs> as we approach, I think we're about two weeks away from, from online wagering on sports here in Kentucky. Um, sports betting company DraftKings apologized Monday after using the September 11th, 2001 terror attacks to entice people to bet on baseball and football games on the anniversary of the tragedy that killed nearly 3,000 people. Mm. The Boston-based company offered users a 9-11 themed promotion that required three New York-based teams, Yankees, Mets, and Jets, to win their games Monday, the 22nd anniversary of the attacks on the World Trade Center and Pentagon, 
and the downing of a passenger jet in a field in Pennsylvania. After an outcry on social media from people offended by the promotion titled, quote, Never Forget, DraftKings took it down and apologized. Eh, inappropriate. Yeah, I mean, I feel like there's... You never really, you can talk about things in the, yeah. you know, you're like, oh, this sounds like a good. There was probably good intent. Right. I'm sure that's what it was. <laughs> They're like, this would be a good way but to recognize. Think it through. <laughs> right. Until you kind of put it out there and then yeah. you're like, oh, maybe not. And, you know, were like the pros, were some proceeds going to families? I doubt it. <laughs> Well, okay. That might be one way to make it better. Before we move any further, I, yeah. I want to address some oh. comments. Okay. Steve Vess. Oh, right, He's right. got questions okay. about uh, um, solar panels. Yeah. So could I cover Kentucky monthly offices with panels? Well, that's up to you, Steve. Yeah. Uh, if you don't want to do that, you can invest in the FPB. Community uh, solar. Problem. Community solar. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a solar grid on our grounds right uh and you can go to again frankfort community solar you basically com. rent you know and, the usage and, or and buy or you can buy it if you want to yeah yeah you don't have to uh put panels on the roof of kentucky monthly mm -hmm. but you can if you want to do that yeah. on your own uh and then he also says and i've been seeing this and we will put it on the script for next week we'll take note that Kentucky Monthly's 25th anniversary open house is on September 24th at the Foundry. That's great. Yeah. Well, that'll be a fun event. Yeah. Um, Don't miss it. All right. I can't believe it's been around that long. I Steve. know. It's Wow. It's been working at it. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, I think we got to put a bow on it, Kathy. Okay. Let's do it. It's been, uh, it's been a good show. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook. Were you like, eh? <laughs> Deece. Bill was great. Bill was fantastic. Uh, don't forget to follow us on Facebook. You can do it at the main plant board page or cable 10 KY. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure you hit the bell so you get notified every time you go live. If you have any questions or comments or you want to share your community event, you can contact us at cable10 at fewpb.com or use the text machine by texting 502 353 And if you enjoy the show, which we hope you do. We'd love to hear from you. Just go to the QR code on screen right now and leave us a five-star review on Google. And before we wrap, we want to thank Bill Cole for coming up and telling us all about the great things happening at the Grand Theater. I like uh, that in the segment. fall. Yep. <laughs> and uh, don't forget to, to check out their website. Still some yeah. tickets available or you can volunteer. That's a great way to help uh, arts here in yeah. our community. Um, and we also want to thank Brett and David and Paw Paw and Zach for their production work on today's episode. And thank you, Kathy, for hanging out with me. Thank you, Harvey, well, you're for welcome. driving the ship. Well, I try. <laughs> try not to run us aground. Um, we'll be back on Friday. Uh, but until then, remember, if it happens around town. It's on around 10. Around 10 is brought to you by Tim and Rebecca Hubbard with Exit Realty Crutcher. You need realtors who can help navigate the current fast-paced real estate market. So choose local realtors that treat you like family because real estate is what they do and families are why they do it. 